Welcome to another exciting edition of Duckman Cycles in VW Garage. We're back and we're working on the gas tank to my 1956 Chop Top Oval over here, which we uh, have so affectionately named Eleanor. Uh, this car, if you're brand new to the channel, I completely restored and rebuilt it from what was junk. Uh, this car was just, it was virtually obliterated, I mean completely destroyed. And uh, I resurrected it from its death and brought it back to what you see here. Once again, it's a solid car, and it's it's far from original, but when it was beat to death that badly, there was no way I was ever going to get it straight again, so I didn't try to make it straight. <laughs> I tried to build the car the way I wanted. So I'm out here in the garage today with my blue cup, getting a little started on the rum a little early today. Uh, the weather's kind of nice. It's Oddly, it's about 80 degrees instead of, you know, 96 with 100% humidity. I'm sure the temperature will come up probably in a little while, but it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and that is pretty good for a Florida day this time of year. We've been working on a gas tank, and this is now my fourth attempt at finishing this gas tank. I have four videos this week, and every time that I start working on the tank, it starts raining. And uh, just about every time I've had to start throwing everything back in the garage, and you'll get it all put away before the rain starts. So for everyone that's watching this video, you know, please give me a thumbs up. Give me a like on that video. You know, ring that little dingle belly that's down there in the corner. Don't forget to subscribe, especially if you're brand new to this channel. There's a lot of things that we do here. I have a few other YouTube channels, so please go ahead and subscribe to those too so you don't miss a thing. One of which is uh, VV the Duck VV, and of course we have Skeeter the Duck. Uh, I just started up a brand new Facebook group as well. You can find it on Facebook by searching for Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. Or you can look down in the video description here, or look at the first pinned comment, and there'll be a link to it that'll get you there. Also in the description, there's always links to the other things that I'm using, such as tools or chemicals or parts. If you need to know what I'm working on or what I'm working with, there are links that'll get you to where you need to be to uh, allow you to discover what they are. What the hell? <laughs> The hornet in my face. <laughs> I hope the camera picked that up. Probably wants my rum. So anyways, let's get back to welding on this thing and let's see if we can get something taken care of before it starts raining again because I can almost guarantee you, you know, three times of rain, we'll get it again. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate it. Just in the time that I was recording the introduction to this video, the sky started to darken up over in that direction, and the wind is blowing out of the east. It's actually going backwards from the usual weather patterns that we've got. So, <laughs> we might be in for some rain. Let's see what we've got here. Here is my gas tank from the 1956 Oval. This uh, tank top was all that was left of it because this car was submerged under seawater during Hurricane Ivan for a couple days. There was about six feet of seawater. Over the, over the roof of this car. I mean, it was completely submerged for quite a long time. Because of which, this gas tank was actually full of salt water, and the bottom of it completely blew out. There was no bottom on this tank. So I decided that if I'm going to put the original tank back into it, because this car now has a different front end from a 1969 Beetle, I believe it was, the gas tank from an Oval doesn't fit in there anymore, but I wanted to retain that look. I wanted that original early super early gas tank style. It has this hump in it, but at the same time, I wanted to retain some of the um, conveniences, such as a fuel center that gives you your fuel level, so I could put a fuel gauge inside the car. That just makes sense to me, rather than coming out here, looking in the hole, or putting a dipstick down in there, which is the way they actually intended it back in the day. <laughs> so no, I'll put a proper electronic fuel center in here, but what it took to do this is it took a 61 to 1967 gas tank, and I cut the top off of it, and I grafted on the Oval's gas tank. In addition to that, I cut the fuel center section out, which normally lives right about here, and pushed it backwards about five, four and a half, five inches to where it lives now. So this will look, once I've got it all grounded and painted and cleaned up, it should look like it was factory. This tank is coming together as of the last video. I started welding on this side of it, and I was having really, really bad problems with the ground wire on the welder. And I thought it was the fault of the ground clip not grounding out properly to the tank, and it kept moving, and it was shimmying, and it was getting really hot, which indicates to me that it was, wasn't making good ground. But the problem wasn't just here. It was actually at the base, inside the, uh, 
the unit. It was actually loose inside of there, and I had to tighten up the nuts on it. And once I did that, I started to get some much better quality welds. So I'm probably going to have to grind this down and go over it one more time and fill up any of the, the, uh, the holes that I left that just aren't in good enough shape. But once I've got that done, it shouldn't be too big of a deal. We're going to throw some coating on the inside of this tank, and I've got just the thing. We'll shake it up real good, since the inside of it has already been uh, removed all the rust. Since the inside of it has already been removed of all the rust, I should be able to just clean it out, which is a lot of debris on the inside of it right now. We'll get all that out of there. We'll give it a proper coating on the inside. We'll let it dry. It's probably going to take a week or more to dry. And then, of course, we'll uh, clean up the outside of the tank at the same time. Put a little bit of filler over it to try to fill in all these seams and make them look real pretty. And finally, prime it and paint it. And this thing should look like it's brand new by the time that I'm done. So what we're going to do today is we're going to continue welding on it. I've got a little bit of metal forming to, to do on this side to make that contour shape the, uh, the side of the tank there. I need to do a little bit of cutting. Everything's been cut on this side. This side needs to be cut a little bit. And then I'm going to have to expand the lower tank and reduce the top tank so that way the two pieces don't scissor like they are right now. So that way they align a little better and get a little bit of welding done on there. So with that said, let me go ahead and put the camera aside and I'll start setting up my tools and see if we can get some welding done here. I don't believe this weather. There was absolutely nothing on the weather map. Nothing. Yeah, it was all way to the south of me, and of course, here we go. All right, we're gonna stay at it as long as we can. We're gonna milk it for time this time. Starting to hear thunder. It was faint, but I can hear it. Well, it was getting a little dark up there, but uh, no rain, no rain. The breeze has picked up and the temperature has dropped. It's actually beautiful for Florida weather right now. I mean, this, this is amazing. If it stayed like this right now with the sun not too intense, not getting my skin burnt, this is beautiful. I'll take this any day. I just love my rum and cola. It's just giving me the burpees. I would advertise for both the cola company and the rum company, but um, since neither one of them's paying me, guess what? I'm not gonna. <laughs> but oh yeah, I'm gonna enjoy that some. Good stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yes, back to welding. Time to have a little sip. My favorite. <laughs> well, looking up at that sky, still looking pretty murky, but uh, still still nothing. Got blue skies over there yet, but the temperature sure has dropped. And... Well, that's turning out pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Need to get this corner trimmed out over here and run all the way through here up to about this weld. But the most important part Look down that contour. You see how everything is has a straight curve? That's really what I was aiming for. I want this thing to look factory. All factory ski slope. 
after this message. <laughs> mm -hmm. now, when you work with metal like this, you don't need to beat the crap out of it. You just kind of let the hammer bounce off of it. And it pulls the two pieces together in this case because they're a little fanned out. It's nice and flat. I rub my finger over it. The two pieces are now made it up straight so I can run a bead of weld across it here. Well, we're not running beads, we're running dots. Only a little dot at a time. Don't want to run a bead. If you run a bead, you're going to risk warping the metal. And this thing is already warped enough because it's crappy Brazilian stamping, and you can see just how badly these Brazilian gas tanks were made. And the Chinese ones are just as bad. And I'm starting to hear raindrops, but we're not going to stop working. But this over here also needs to be wrapped in a little bit. This is the ugliest corner on the whole tank. This is the one I'm not proud of. But uh, that was part of, again, the manufacturing process of the Brazilian steel. So, whatever I don't fix will do the job of some filler. And they'll be kind of thick right through here, about an eighth of an inch thick. And, I, and again, I'm not too proud of that, but you do the best you can with what you got, and I don't need to be working on this thing for a month. It'd be nice to have maybe one more video of this, and maybe even this one would be the last one, but uh, <laughs> I don't need to be working on it forever, so I'm going to close this up as best I can. Well, the vast majority of that rain is actually going to the north of us. It was coming in from over here, and then it kind of went that way. You can see all the droplets on the Z. Oops, wrong way. See them all on the hood there. So we did get a little bit of rain, but uh, not enough to make me stop, not yet. The more I'm looking at this corner here, I don't really like that. I think I'm probably going to build it out, make it 90 degrees, follow this line that you see here. Because I'm not satisfied with that. It looks, it looks unfinished. And this car doesn't need that. I think the only reason why that was put there is because the stamping was universal. And this was also used for a later model tank. If they put the nozzle here, the fill nozzle, which goes in, which then connects up to the, uh, the input spout on the body. So I don't like the way that looks. I think I'm probably going to cut this out. I'll probably draw a line right through here, cut a line here, right through here, and then bend it up and form it back into the proper shape it's supposed to be and then add a couple little pieces of filler wherever necessary. Stock ovals didn't have a 45 angle in the corner. They were just squared off. And I wanted to make it look like a stock oval as much as possible, although I'm going to probably throw carpet on it. And you're probably never going to see it anyway, but I know it's there. So let's make it right. I really don't like this tool. I'm not a fan. It doesn't work very well. It has a tendency to quit. You pull the trigger and it doesn't do anything. You have to... You gotta hit the blade on the end to make it work. And that's a pain in the ass because you start cutting and all of a sudden it stalls out and then you gotta whack it to get it going again. Every single one that I've ever had from every manufacturer, everywhere from an $8 tool to an $80 tool has done the same stupid shit. And I'm really sick and tired of these. If anybody knows of one that works really well and standard jigsaws don't do it either, I've tried them too. They either don't have the power or you have to put too much weight on it to keep it uh, to keep it cutting straight. So if anybody knows of a better body saw um, than this style of tool, let me know. Uh, even the electric ones. I've tried an electric one by some large Chinese tool manufacturer, you know, hazard fraught. And uh, the electric ones will overheat and the motors will fry. And that's only after running them for about 5 to 10 minutes. You know, I mean, brand new tool. 5 to 10 minutes, die. Not much of a surprise. I've done the most I could to, to make them last, but these things just suck. Really suck. They get the job done, but I just don't like them. There's got to be a better way to do it. So if anybody knows of a better answer, let me know. Thank you. Well, the cut's been made. I'm going to have to do a little bit of um, pressing over here of these parts to get them together because if you notice, there's a pretty big gap between here and there. Zoomy, zoomy. Backy, backy. 
There we go. I can actually get my finger up underneath this lip. That's something that it wasn't doing before. And I think I can probably, with a screwdriver, pry them together a little bit. Once I get them started, where the hell my screwdriver went, it was right in front of me, and now it's gone. And damn it, I even spilled my rum out. Oh man. Sounds like end of day to me. Shit. Just a little bit of prying over here with the screwdriver. We got the two surfaces flush. And tacky tacky weld. There we go. Now I'm gonna work on this corner a little more right here. What I'll probably do is, is whack it with a hammer a couple times. Just gently bop it into place. But this is the biggest gap that I had on the whole tank. This is where the slack needs to come out. I might even go so far as to put a relief cut right up through here and then bend the two pieces in and then weld it all together, including the relief cut. Well, let's see what I can do with the hammer. If I can find the damn thing. Like I said, I already spilled my drink out. <laughs> and I lost the hammer. Hammer found. Wish I could get inside the tank and beat it out from the inside. The lower half actually needs to come out a little bit. Let's see if we can pry it. Ooh, that was some strong rum. Yeah, you guys remind me not to drink that much rum next time I'm doing this kind of job. <laughs> All right, we're looking pretty good on the top side up here, but now the underside is uh, a little mangled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this through over here, and I think I could probably beat this side out, but I'm not going to until I get this weld it together. Yeah, if this is the only spot that I've got here where everything doesn't want to line up, and this is the least of my worries. Okay, I think we're pretty good now. Let's go ahead and get that weld filled in here. And then uh, what I might wind up doing, because it does look like it's a little bit concave, is I might weld a little bolt onto it, put a slide hammer, and pull a dent out. Just gotta see how much we're gonna distort it with the welder. Coming at you from my phone cam. Unfortunately, my camcorder filled up the SD card. I guess I let it run too long while I was working here. It must have recorded, you know, two hours of footage nonstop. I really hadn't thought much about it. But anyway, we're at a, a really good stopping point here. Um, what we've got is just the welding is, is completed. Whatever's left on this thing is just a bit of grinding, maybe a little bit of touch-up, and then the external rust removal. Once uh, um, we've got the grinding done on that, and got the rust removal done, then it's ready to start doing a little bit of filler, some primer, and lastly, some paint. So we're getting to that stage right now, but it's going to be another video. Uh, anyways, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to click that little subscribe button and ring that little dingle belly there next to the subscribe button. That'll give you updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out my other channels, VV the Duck VV, as well as Skeeter the Duck. And please hit up my Facebook group page. You can go ahead and share your projects there and you can discuss this project as well as some others, as well as the others that other people are currently posting there. So please hit me up on Facebook. Look up Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. Thanks for watching, you guys. We'll see you next time. So anyway, that's how it's going to look when it's bolted in. It's going to look just like that. Looks very much like an early, early Beetle, you know, something pre-1960. I think I about got it. Looking pretty good. Spare tire situation is, is tight, like we discussed before in previous video. Going to have to put a, uh, a narrow tire in there, which isn't a big deal to me. I don't mind running a donut. One of the discussions we did have is that the bolt pattern uh, on this is now 5x130, and the spare tire that I demonstrated is a 4x130. So I'll have to run some kind of adapter, or at least leave the adapter bolted to the spare wheel, or I can get a spare tire from a, a 944 or a 928, which probably is a good idea anyway, because some of them are 16 inches. 
And one of the concerns that I have here is these are 16 inch wheels. And since I put the 944 braking system on here, I need to make sure that that wheel is going to clear the caliper and the disc that's currently on there. So I might need a bigger wheel. But future discussion about that when I get to that point, uh, I'll pop them back off and see if spare tire is going to fit with an adapter. Um, if it doesn't or even get close, then I'll have to rethink that situation. But here's where we're at. So thanks for watching, everybody.